Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be continuing our discussion about the Perseverance rover currently on Mars doing a lot of really interesting science. And in this video I wanted to give you some updates including some of the recent pictures published by NASA because officially the rover has already started scanning and analyzing different rocks with the next step being the launch of the beautiful helicopter known as Ingenuity sometime in the next month or so which by itself is going to be super exciting and also is going to be one of the bigger achievements of this mission. But let's start with some of the better pictures that NASA released in the last few weeks. And let's start right here with an aerial overview of where the rover landed in the location that's now referred to as the Octavia E. Butler landing site. And in the last few weeks NASA was able to locate all of the parts including the parachute, the descent stage, the heat shield, and show us exactly where they are now and where they landed. And in case you were wondering and wanted to see where the rover is in comparison to everything else, NASA's free application known as Eyes on the Solar System allows you to see exactly where the rover has landed and even takes you through some of the other missions here as well. And in the last few weeks the rover has already started rolling around having finished all of its major testing and is thus now ready to start its journey across the Martian fields. Right now NASA is planning to take this particular path you see on the screen, which will help the rover investigate several different ancient environments that according to NASA could have been once habitable. The rover is going to start at the cliffs defining the base of the delta produced by an ancient river and the path will then take the rover up across the delta toward a possible ancient shoreline deposits. It's also going to attempt to climb up the 2000 feet or 600 meter high rim of the crater and is then going to try to explore the surrounding plains. All of this should take approximately one Martian year or possibly about two Earth years. And just to give you a bit of a comparison here, the crater in the middle is roughly around one kilometer or about 0.6 miles in diameter. And as it's traveling around and as it's essentially crossing all of these locations, it's going to be using a device known as Planetary Instrument for X-ray Lithochemistry, also known as Pixel. And here's a device that allows Pixel to change the angle of the imager to get the best possible results from various rocks it's going to be scanning. And a lot of new images NASA has been releasing in the last few weeks look so much better than any previous mission. They look much crisper, they have a lot more color, and I was actually trying to figure out how they were able to achieve this, because normally in photography, at least for the color balance, you need to somehow set it up. And interestingly, on top of the rover, NASA engineers placed a few calibration targets with specific predefined colors and contrast that a lot of these cameras used to calibrate images and adjust for various changes such as brightness in case for example a sudden dust storm or some other event occurs in the vicinity. There's even a website um, about this camera known as Mast Cam Z that tells us a little bit more about the details of the technique and also about the cameras used and how such incredibly high quality images are produced by the rover no matter what the light conditions are on the surface. And MassCam Z already allowed the rover to produce a very beautiful, very high quality 360 degree panorama shot that's over 200 megabytes in size. And you can actually go and download this yourself, which will allow you to see the surrounding area in extremely high detail. It was produced by taking individual shots and combining all of them into one large mosaic. And here you can kind of even see how the rover was able to produce all of this by essentially adding up every individual picture one after another. This allowed it to create an extremely accurate and very rich in color shot of the surrounding area which allowed the NASA scientists to first of all plan the pathway that the rover will be taking in the next few weeks but also allow the scientists to identify certain interesting features on the ground such as certain rocks they would like to take a look at which the scientists have already started to explore in the last few days. Here's one of many rocks that NASA identified. This one here is a wind carved rock that's only about two feet in diameter. Something that tells us about how inhospitable and how extremely windy conditions on Mars can get once the dust storms begin. There's also this really interesting shot of what seems to be a fan shaped deposit. And this is very likely a sediment of what's known as a delta or a river delta. This is very likely where an ancient river was entering into an ancient lake inside the Jezero crater on Mars. 
And this is also the location where the rover is planning to go in the future. Now NASA also released this interesting video showing us the virtual visualization of the first attempt to move the rover. And this basically shows us the first steps of perseverance on Mars, with the actual tracks visible afterwards as well. And following the initial analysis of the panorama picture, NASA scientists decided that there are two possible paths the rover can take in the next few weeks. In this picture you can see them in blue and in purple. But eventually the rover is going to end up very close to the delta I showed you previously, and it's going to start heading there sometime in the next few weeks. And because the rover has 23 different cameras on board, it's going to be able to take a lot of different imagery throughout its travel. As a matter of fact, Every single day, NASA has been posting anywhere from a few dozen to several hundred pictures, all of which are available in the link you can find in the description below. And though some of the cameras like the NAF cams are going to produce better quality images, some of the other cameras like the HAS cams or hazard cameras are also going to be very useful in finding things that other cameras cannot see. But on the way to the Delta, the mission is going to essentially stop at pretty much every rock like you see right here that was done recently, and it's going to use its pixel camera to try to analyze various rocks for composition in order to discover the history of Mars and also possible signs of previous life here. The way this is done is by taking different views of the same rock, which will usually produce something like this. This is an example of another rock the NASA scientists currently refer to as Ma'az, which in Navajo language means Mars. And then by analyzing this with a camera such as the SuperCam, the scientists can determine the origin and other features of these rocks. In this case, this particular rock has been discovered to be basaltic in composition, and it's also most likely a volcanic rock in origin, consisting of different fine grains of igneous material that was cemented over time in some sort of a watery environment, once again showing us that the water was flowing through this region. But the most exciting part in the next few weeks is going to be the Ingenuity Mars helicopter. Only a few days ago the protective cover or the debris shield was released from the rover. This was protecting the helicopter during the landing. And now the helicopter is going to try to rotate down and assume a position necessary for a vertical takeoff. The Ingenuity helicopter is going to attempt its test flight sometime in the next 30 days. And the engineers have already added different locations and different parameters for this test flight, including the so-called airfield, or the area where the helicopter is going to be flying, along with the potential flight zone, all of which will be documented by one of the cameras known as Hi-Rise on top of Perseverance rover. Here's actually another look of all of this from a different perspective, and this is exactly where the Perseverance rover is going to be in order to observe all of this. And for the Ingenuity helicopter, this is what its sort of will look like with an overlay roughly showing us where the helicopter is going to be flying. And the brief profile of the mission is, well, essentially as follows. It's going to take off, it's going to fly around, take a few pictures, and then either land in the same location as before or potentially in a new site, assuming that it finds a flat enough site somewhere in the area. And on top of this, NASA has also released several audio files allowing us to hear what it sounds like for a rover to, well, basically rover around Mars. It doesn't really sound that super exciting, so I'm not going to be playing it in this video. But you can check out the link for this in the description below. And on top of this, one of the links in the description allows you to explore some of the recent images, like this one right here from yesterday, showing us what seems to be a rock. And you're going to be seeing a lot of rocks in those pictures. Which to me at least looks extremely similar to the meteorite rock picture that was taken by one of the previous missions a few years ago. But this is definitely where the exciting part for the geologists comes in because they get to analyze these rocks by looking at them and by getting the data from the previously mentioned X-ray camera and then compare them to similar rocks we've discovered on planet Earth. Now, if you'd like to learn a little bit more about Martian rocks versus Earth rocks, I'm also posting another really cool geology post that goes through this in a lot of detail. But I guess for now that's all I wanted to mention in this particular video. We're going to be hearing more about Perseverance rover and Ingenuity helicopter in the next few weeks, and I'm definitely going to be following this up with another video when the helicopter takes flight and when we get the details of the flight itself. For now though, check out some of the images NASA posted from their website, and check out some of the other images I posted in the description below as well. 
Also subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by buying the wonderful person t-shirt or by joining the channel memberships as well. Either way, thank you for watching, I'll see you tomorrow, stay wonderful, and as always, bye-bye.